Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Shows Architect. Today, we're diving back into some more Create Above and Beyond. So, of course, welcome back. Today, we're going to get started right into Tinker's Construct. Um, where we last left off, we ended up getting all of this stuff built. Beautiful looking constructions. And, uh, well, we stopped right here. Right after we built the Tinker's Construct smelter. Um, now... I don't really need this just yet, as we are going to make a very, very basic tool. Um, so let's go ahead and make just a standard, very standard, I should say, pickaxe. It is just going to be wood, uh, a tool binding made out of sticks, and we're going to combine this and make ourselves a very, very simple stone pickaxe. Now, with this stone pickaxe, I should be able to add an upgrade to it of diamond, giving it a mining level of diamond. Without this, it's just got a mining level of stone. Also, the durability on this is 130. When we put this on here, it bumps up to 630. The good part about this is I can keep this pick and we still have room, like we still have two upgrades so I can put speed on it. We can keep this pick for a long time because so long as we have cobblestone, we can make stone repair kits. And stone repair kits allow us to just boop and repair our pick. So, believe it or not, this is a really, really good starting pick. Better than iron, and no longer do we have to waste our iron on picks. We can literally just go mining and not have to worry about it. So, I came out here to honestly just gather up some wood, but I believe I found myself a house. Now, I really need to get myself some leather. Um, and then, uh, like, potentially cows. I just haven't really seen any cows lingering about. Now, we do have chickens, which I eventually want to grab you guys. But, haven't seen a whole lot of cows. Which is kind of unfortunate. Also, uh, like, I just found another sack, which is awesome. Because um, I want to make a backpack. I want to eventually get a backpack. By the way, all of this wool, I'm grabbing as much of it as possible. Because at the moment, we don't have a lot of sheep, even though... Well, I think sheep just spawned right in front of me. Um, we don't have a whole lot of sheep, but over here is another one of those structures that we found. And uh, I'm going to loot that bad boy. There is, uh, There should be some good loot in there. And if we find anything, by the way, that is leather related, uh, like let's say we find a saddle or we find something like that, we could put that uh, and use that to our advantage because um, that leather can actually be uh, reclaimed. Well, with the cutting board. Oh my gosh, this mod. If you have three sacks on you, you get slowness too. So unfortunately, I guess two is the max that we can carry for right now because I'm not taking that hit. Aha, uh -huh. here we go. This is where the loot's at. Ooh, we got cloth. And of course, tons of these. <laughs> All right, let's go down here. I would take the cart, but man, I just, you never know. It could totally be trapped and we can just fall into a pit of lava. Like that. Look at that. Look at this stone. Boom. It falls out from underneath your feet. <gasps> or that happened. Um, I think I just made this pick. Yikes. I need to pay more attention. I, that could have that could have ended it. Oh, thank goodness it's just gravel down here. Ooh, we end up getting a slimy fern leaf. Oh, this is where the loot's at, though. This is the good stuff. All right, sack, do me good. Throw that in there. Perfect. And then we'll pick up the rest of the stuff. Yeah, all that gold. I'll take that. Um, anything else? Torches? Chorus fruit? That's an interesting drop. A scoot? The loot pool of, on this is uh, quite, quite random, which is nice. Also, I can actually break obsidian now, even with this stone pickaxe. It's kind of nice, so we can actually collect obsidian while we're down here. Ice bucket challenge complete. By the way, did this one have a uh, dual track area? Oh God, this is bad. I don't like these blocks. I don't think this one did. I don't think this one, yeah, this one didn't branch off into two different directions. Aha, uh -huh. they have been spotted. I'm going to have to come back with a lead or something to pick these guys up. We're actually not too far from the base. 
It's literally just right over the hill. You know, don't mind me, just uh, just bringing the loot home. I mean, these guys had remained surprisingly attentive the entire time. Now I just gotta get a pin set up, figure out where I'm gonna put that bad boy. So at this point in the game, I noticed there are some backpacks, which is gonna require a little bit of work and also string and, and, and a bit more leather, or we can make a toolbox. So the toolbox, I know could be like an early game storage solution. Um, it's actually really, really cool. So while we have this, um, we can place it down and it has inventory slots. So we can actually define, for example, while we're mining, we can say, hey, uh, take cobblestone, uh, andesite cobble, diorite, uh, shoot, even granite cobblestone. What other things will we encounter while we're mining? Dirt, potentially sand. Um, all these things can be put inside here into a slot, like so. And I believe this holds more than just this. So um, if I'm outside of the toolbox, you can see I can see the actual items. And then if I have items in my inventory, for example, cobblestone, let's see, I believe this can just, yeah, this can actually hold more than a stack. And let's see, I can go return out of the toolbox. I have, take some cobble out. I have cobble right there, return to toolbox, and it actually goes inside the toolbox. However, how does it work if we have the toolbox in our inventory? And I pick up the cobble. So it stays in my inventory, but there are several different ways that this can work. So after doing a little bit more research and understanding the toolbox, really, this is not really a bag per se, as much as it is an awesome tool for basically setting up just about anything with like create, for example, um, which we can use this for an actual internal to uh, storage system as well. So I could use this for mining. It's gonna hold four stacks of the materials I have. I think I'm gonna make a regular bag though for that. Um, but what it's really good for, I think, would be for all of these parts. Like, let's say andesite casings, funnels, um, not the, the actual building parts, but like things that we build with a lot and things that we're gonna use a lot. So for example, cogwheels, uh, andesite casings, shafts, all the, the funnels and tunnels and all kinds of stuff. We can have multiple different toolboxes and when we get close to them, we can actually select the one that we want and it puts it in our inventory, right? And then we can put it back just like that. So it's actually pretty nice because we can be nearby all of our toolboxes and select multiple toolboxes. Pretty, pretty cool. I'm probably gonna be using that for sure. All right, I've got to get a few more cows grown up before I start killing them all. Yeah, uh, because we're gonna need at least what, five leather, I think? Because I'm gonna, I've gotta go mining. Um, and there's a backpack mod in here called Improved Backpacks. There's also a satchel here from Thermal. How much does a satchel hold? I actually didn't even realize that was in here. Let's take a look at the satchel, but the this backpack also requires a bit. This might be something that we can do early on as well. It stores in the belt and back slot and has a key that allows us to open as a filter. Huh, that might actually be worth an, at least an early because this mod requires you to tan the leather. We also need to basically string it, you know, good old leather processing, and then add the wool, and then upgrade it with tiny pockets, which are going to require gold, iron, and I guess diamond to make them bigger. So that's probably the ultimate goal, because I think these are definitely gonna be bigger overall. So I've just been breeding up my cows, and apparently I get 15 silver for the ranch, which is basically breed 10 animals. Kind of cool. I didn't even realize there was like a little quest here for different tasks. Like that's kind of one that's just out of the ordinary. Like it doesn't even cost anything. I just had to breed the animals. So before I get a backpack and everything set up, I think making an arboreal extractor is going to be something that's going to benefit me uh, in the, uh, the long term. So all I need is a tree to place this on temporarily. So for example here, and if I place this up against the tree, it doesn't even require power, I don't think. Oh, does it require coal? I don't think it requires power. 
Maybe it does require coal to keep running, but um, this is going to extract resin from this tree. So that way when we do need rubber and start getting into belts and stuff, this is gonna be already ready to go. Yeah, no, it doesn't require anything. It just runs, which is great. I don't know what this slot is for. And there are augments that you could put in later on. But yeah, we're, it's gonna take a while for this to build up enough for us to put inside of, a, I believe a mixer? I think it goes in a mixer or it's a press one. So here we go. This is just gonna require wool, right? Or does it require leather? So four leather, a zinc in the middle. For some reason it doesn't want, JEI doesn't want to work. Why does it not craft? Oh, does it need specifically rock wool? Oh yeah, no, that's that's why. Wow, that was actually kind of interesting. Uh, I can I can definitely make rock wool. So even though this is a bit out of ordinary, to get this, all you had to do was smelt gravel and then smelt the slag that the gravel produces, and you get rock wool. Um, so yeah, that's all we needed to make this bag. And there we go. How big is this? Because I'm yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be super big like these are probably going to be. But that's still big enough and it can actually hold the sacks. So we have like storage within storage, which is really great. And if we fill this whole thing with sacks, that would be a thing too. But we're not going to do that. We're going to wait to get this bag for sure. But at least this gives me a little bit of time to go mining until our, well, our cows are old enough and, 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 and they're, they're well enough to, to be slaughtered. So at the moment, it may be taking me a little bit of time to mine, but I think I should probably start hunting for redstone because as soon as we get redstone, we can really beef up the speed of this, at least double it, if not triple it in speed. Um, so the further I go down, of course, I believe we should be able to get redstone. I believe it tells us in here. So within JEI, if we're actually looking for redstone, uh, the ore itself, it says, does not generate crushed cinnabar to obtain redstone. So I'm glad I read that because it does not generate in the world. We need cinnabar. So I know cinnabar, however, uh, does generate. But when it says crush cinnabar, um, what does it mean by crush? Can we put it in here? So we can. Okay. So good. Uh, so we know cinnabar is between 1 and 30. So we can consider that our redstone, I guess. Uh, y level 1 and 30, which is going to be down on this level that I have set up down here. It does get a little bit more dangerous the further you go down. So perfect. Right here, cinnabar. So that will equal redstone, which is perfect. The more of this we generate or find, the... Uh, the, the faster we can get our pick going and the easier it's going to be for us to mine overall. So this little bit of ore generation is kind of crazy. We have Stellarite, like right here. I hope it doesn't kill me. But they're right next to each other. Normally, Stella, you have to really grind for? Oh boy. Yeah, that did hurt us a little bit. And that's why I have an axe. Oh, and this stuff is breaking beneath me. Oh, that's horrifying. Okay, we did get the Stellarite piece, which is great. Uh, however, uh, yeah, I need to be careful. And I got one more to get. These areas I have not torched up yet, and that's where things are spawning from. I can never pass this up while mining. Come on now. Looky there. Yes. Our first diamond ore patch found. Very nice. However, I did have diamond before. I think we had enough to make an entire pick just from just like just looting things. So pretty nice to actually find some uh, some real diamond down here. It was actually pop popping right out of the surface. So this is ran randomonium? <laughs> Randominium? Um kind of horrifying actually. I just I just broke this one and it like disappeared on me. Whoa! Did that just that just drop random loot? Okay, I guess I understand the name now. <laughs> so it just, it dropped tiles. That is, uh, that's interesting. And the, the, it's random movement kind of scared me. Wasn't expecting the ore to come at me. So I think I stumbled upon something. I have no idea what it is, but there is a structure down here. And heavily guarded by creepers. And I don't have 
I don't have a good way of really getting to it. Uh, I do see a bunch of cinnabar, which I'm kind of kind of wanting. Uh, here's where these repair kits, by the way, come into play. Notice all I need is cobblestone, and literally cobblestone repairs my pick. It's that cheap. It's crazy how how effective that is. Ooh, this is a big vein of this stuff. Good, because I haven't found a whole lot of it, so I was kind of glad it's here, but what is this? Okay, so there is a spawner with some skeletons. I'm... It, there is loot down here. I'm not going to be able to really get down there, unfortunately, because I don't have gear. I don't have enough gear. So I want to see if maybe I can break this and maybe attack these guys. <laughs> is this like an early game mob farm? It's actually not too far away from our base either. Ooh. Yeah, that's bone. I am being pretty brave popping in here to see what these have in them. I really want that. Don't want to break the spawner, however. Ooh, what is that? Ice charge from thermal. Interesting. A dagger. And then there was a quartz arrow and then a mushroom. Hmm. I think that's it. So finally, I think we have enough redstone built up over here to definitely upgrade our pick. I just want to see how fast it's actually going to be once it is upgraded. Um, we should be able to put two steps, which should be 50 each um, of, of giving us haste. So it's going to consume 50. I believe that is going to be our first level of haste. And then if I put another set on there it'll go to hastier um, and now you can see that uh we have mining speed which is uh plus 10 percent um and we are st we still have one ability slot left now abilities are things that uh, we can't really get into just yet because i believe it does require a full tinker's anvil for most of them not everything but for most things um you can see the, these right here we could definitely do but it'll tell you if it actually removes a mod, uh, ability slot or not. So uh, things like glowing, for example. Um, this is actually really nice if we had the ability to put it on there. Because as we mine, it'll light up dark areas. It just it, There's so many like random things that you can put on here, which is really nice. Also, what's nice is Luckier is separated now from everything. So it's an ability, and the ability grows on it. Uh, versus here and you can like you can up your ability um, and add more abilities and all kinds of stuff So later on we have the ability to upgrade this even more at the moment. It should be 10% faster So let's just see mining stone. Oh, yeah, that's significantly faster I would say this definitely competes in is if not better than regular diamond mining speed So I can tell you making this backpack requires uh a couple of steps. Yeah, we have to take this thing with uh, with the shears and some, some twine. And we need like, what, four of those? I don't know if this is a durability on it. Actually, I think it's five for this backpack. Yeah, we need five. Oh, and we have to make that for each one. So <laughs> we need five spools of string, which is just, I mean, a couple of sticks. It's, it's really cheap, but still, it requires a bit of string. Good thing we have flax. And then we put that together, and then we're also gonna need wool. Uh, but that's only after we've smelted the leather. Um, so we gotta dry that leather out. Yeah, I, I needed a lot of the string. Like, every operation requires this. Oh no, one of these gives you three. Oh. Oh wait, no, it's giving me three because of the... Oh, never mind. <laughs> and then to put the backpack in... Uh, wrong backpack this backpack in and then we could do that and then that and then that now our backpack is a little bit bigger which actually is basically the uh the size that you would expect it to be i mean it's, it's the size of a regular chest which is great and this actually goes in your backpack slot which is kind of nice and you can hit b to actually open it up so I'm getting ready to set up some strainers, which are going to be used uh, mainly for generating sand. 
However, to be able to get that to work properly, we're gonna need rice. And we need to basically farm this rice and use what we get as a, buy, as a product on a cutting board with a knife to be able to get ourselves the parts needed for the strainer, um, which is kind of interesting. So this is gonna give us straw. Straw, believe it or not, is actually used for a lot of stuff from Farmer's Delight. Um, used to make rope, but also used to make canvas, and canvas is actually what we need in order to make the, uh, the strainer bits for the actual strainers. So strainers are gonna get us a few things, and I'm gonna show you how to properly set them up so that way they're as efficient as possible. So now that our rice is grown, we can actually break the tops off of the rice. And those are actually the bits that we need and we can leave the rest of the plant to grow, um, which is perfect. So there we go. So we don't have to worry about like replanting all this in the water because it's kind of a pain to do that. We now have 10. I hope that's enough. I mean, I do have a couple of these already that we've collected. So I could either throw it inside the grinder, which is currently working on stuff right now, or I can place it here. Now, if you place this in your offhand, it makes this process a lot faster. And there's, by the way, only a 50% chance of you getting straw from that. So we actually got incredibly lucky out of the 10, we ended up getting all the straw that we need. And of course, the straw is going to be used to make canvas. So we just take this, put that together, and we got ourselves canvas. And like I said, I do have a couple of canvases here, and these are used to make the strainer. We only need three and a few sticks. Very simple to throw this together and get ourselves at least a strainer up and running for right now. So all we have to do is take an andesite machine, an iron bar, we get ourselves a strainer base. Now we can set this up anywhere, but you do get a, I believe a 20, it's a 20 or 30% buff for it being inside of what is considered a river. Um, also beaches, I believe get a, it's, it's like a stack thing. Like ocean is 10% and then like beach is 20% and then river is like 30% of an efficiency increase. But you can set it up anywhere, honestly. Like we can set it up here in the ground. And of course this is probably gonna get moved. So do expect it to get moved. I'm gonna place it down too, so you see it's like this, and then we can place our strainer in, and then a water source needs to be placed to the side of it because this is actually the most efficient area for the water to, to get to it. Um, and then any other ones that are placed outside of the flowing area will start to get an efficiency decrease on it. Um, so I'll ex try to explain that. So if you place the water here, this is the strongest flowing water. Now, if you place another strainer here and here and here, you'd be fine on the efficiencies for all of those. But if you place another strainer here and the water is now the next over, then you're, start, you're gonna start getting an efficiency loss down the line. So just keep that in mind. But look at this. This right here is, uh, is producing dirt, apparently, and white sand, all the different kinds of sand. And I think the main thing this is gonna be set up for is creating clay balls. So we'll end up with a bulk washing area um, generating clay balls and that could be even that could even be set up over here in some form or another oh yeah by the way it doesn't generate dirt uh the dirt by the way is for me uh because this does act as a hopper so if you didn't realize that this is basically like a hopper as well so you could really potentially use it if you're smart enough i guess um the interesting thing is, is it creates a clay ball so setting this up wouldn't be too difficult um, there, nothing happens when you wash a clay ball either. So maybe we should set this up over here and just see what we can't do with it. Like we could actually, we could potentially set this up so that way it drops it down here and we could fit this thing like literally right here. So it may seem crazy to fit it there, but let's just put this here for example. Actually, an insight funnel, we'd have to raise this up one more to get that to work. So here we go. As a perfect example, I believe, uh, so long as I don't place it there. There we go. That is now running to the strainer. Slap that on. Let's open this up. I'm going to grab a funnel. And then we have to put this on the right way. So that way it's pulling items out and it should drop it right there. I believe as soon as it's generated. 
So as soon as this generates something, and then it should be able to be washed just like everything else in this little compact setup that we have. I know it's super janky, but you know, whatever works, right? So long as this actually generates, you know what? Let's uh, take, oh, it spit it out right there though. Hmm. So is that trap, that trap door is just in the way. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. But if I just do that and close the trap door, it should start washing. However, I hope that the water over here doesn't block anything if we grind it. Oh, it doesn't have enough time, I don't think, to fully get washed. Nope, we'd have to extend this. So really to get this to work, all I have to do is have an andesite funnel that is running one further back, and it seems like right here it's changing, and then it gets to put in there. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it being moved back like that is perfect. So all I gotta do is change this. By the way, eventually we won't be using <laughs> chests as much. We'll probably be using, um, yeah, we'll probably end up be probably be using a lot more barrels because there are there's a mod in here that upgrades barrels and stuff. So, hey. It's semi-automated. We can't have this exactly where I want it. And I still don't know how it affects everything else. But at least for the time being, while we're not using that for anything else, I can go ahead and toss that in there. And bam, we have clay automated. So we can go on right ahead and uh, go ahead and select sand. Apparently, I have to have sand in my inventory to do it. Sand. And submit. Uh, apparently. Oh, wait, I have to accept our first quest here. Then I can submit that. Perfect. And then we have clay that's going into a washer. And then eventually we're going to have to set up some stuff for this. That's why things are things are going to start getting a little bit more complicated. Uh, they're going to be manual for right now for the first few episodes. But really, once we get conveyor belts and things running, that's when automation is really going to start to blossom. And that's when I'm going to start having a lot more fun with this especially, especially once we get conveyor belts. Today was definitely a product of necessity. We had to get mining and stuff set up. We had to get ourselves better prepared for the future, but things are really starting to ramp up. They're gonna to start to ramp up really, really quickly. But of course, I do wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that is gonna be a huge thanks to Epic Shot 6. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord, I recommend it going to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. That's the that's the place where you're gonna find it. And of course, if you're interested in becoming a premium member, you can find that all there as well. Of course, guys, I hope to see you in the next episode. Be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and give this video the biggest thumbs up because, well, there's only one button now. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Of course, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.